안녕하세요. 민배씨. 싱가포 남자입니다. 안녕하세요, 여러분들. And Happy New Year 2022 to all of you. This is the second Friday of January 2022. And uh, I'm here in a new apartment here in Istanbul. And as you can tell from my voice, uh, sl slightly different from usual. I'm like 90% uh, recovered from COVID and very likely Omicron. Oh, you got, oh, no wonder you had the, you know, as the title said, uh, the, the the roughest start of a new year that I've ever had uh, in 2022 because of COVID. But no, COVID wasn't even the worst thing that happened to me. Okay, over the past three weeks, uh, like one week before New Year and two weeks after, right up to today, so much have ha ha so much happened, and yes, definitely have been the most challenging period, or uh, the most challenging. New Year period that I've ever experienced in my life and I'm here to share with you guys so I, I hope you guys had a really really happy and nice New Year right so if you have been following my live stream you may have an idea what's going on uh, in my life over the past few weeks so far uh, <coughs> I moved house and I settled okay that's the end result and uh, it all started about one week before New Year where I was supposed to renew my residence visa for another year here in Istanbul. Now, very unluckily, again, you know, this is why if you are living overseas, you never wait till the last minute to renew your visa. You renew your visa the very first moment you get to do it, okay? I waited all the way to the to the final final one month to do this. So, so I got myself into a lot of trouble. Like, I have very, very, very little time to react to new things. What, what new things? Oh, very bad hair day. What new things happened was this. Just days, about three days before I I got the... Just three days before my appointment to renew my visa, a new law came out saying that requires certain documents, okay, from your residence. Basically, what this these documents and stuff, it, what this thing effectively does is that... Uh, if you're a foreigner, you can no longer register your address in a non-residential uh, apartment, meaning like hotel or hotel residence. Yes, I spent my one first whole year in Istanbul last year living in a hotel residence. So that was the problem. Yeah. And over the over the final week, the cold Christmas week of uh, 2021, me and the, the hotel manager was, in fact, I was running alone, okay? I, the, I was running alone to various departments, to and fro, to and fro, back and forth, back and forth. It was really tiring, by the way. Um, I ran back and forth eight times, okay? Now, a lot of people may ask, you know, for this kind of immigration thing, can't you just pay an agent and then they settle everything for you? No. <laughs> okay, this doesn't happen in any country in the world. You can get a lawyer or an agent to prepare your, doc your documents, but in the end of the day, you have to be personally going to this department. Now, that's the problem. If you have ever been living overseas, you know that when you have to run personally to these departments to do these things, and these departments, they usually don't speak English. They usually speak their language. And if you're not good at their language like me right now, my, my, my Turkish language is only good for buying groceries and taking the cab. So I could not understand anything they were saying, which is why I ran back and forth eight times. I, I keep telling the agent, hey, you, you need to, can I pay you to just come with me and just talk to the guy, see what's going on. They, got, they just kept saying, nah, it's just very simple. They want this. They, I, just show me a picture of what they want. So because they wrote it down for me. Oh, they just want this, this, this. So every time they say they want this, 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 I went back to the hotel, tell the manager guy, and then... Then the manager guy tried to do it for me and then you will never be correctly what they want. Why? See, in the end of the day, I realized this. It's just that the nature of being a hotel residence is disqualified in the first place. But those, those guys in the, in, the, in the department, in the government department, won't tell you straight up like this. They just say, I, no, this document is inaccurate. We need that other document. And every time they say this and that, I go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth eight times. It's extremely tiring. Each back and forth is one and a half hours of walking. I walk. Why? Because through that neighborhood, 
walking about 45 minutes to the department is actually faster than taking a cab because that those road is perpetually jammed right so so that final week was so so final week of 2020 was when i really fought hard to continue staying in the hotel residence that I stayed one whole year last year so that I don't have to make any changes, yeah? And it and it failed in the end. And I was so out of time. I had only two more weeks. Uh actually actually all the way I had only one more week actually. Uh I had only up to last Friday, which is the first Friday of January to renew my visa. Otherwise I'm out of here. Okay. So that that was why on that weekend on Christmas uh, the Christmas weekend, uh, I made a live stream saying that there's a small 25% chance I may be evicted completely from Turkey and a 75% chance I need to move house. Okay, So from that point, the battle started. I only had one week to solve this problem. It was hard. I realized then and then that I just have to move house. I need to go somewhere else that can give me, that can do this paperwork properly. Right. So at that time, then I told my agent and I said, and, and my agent agrees that, you know, wait, I, I, should, I should move house. And then I, I just asked him, I, I don't know Turkish language. Every real estate uh, website I went to, they're all Turkish only. There's no English. I, I, don't, I don't understand what's going on. I don't have time to figure out. I know I can figure it out if given time. I don't have time to, to figure these things out. I just said, tell me amongst your clients, which place has the highest success rate? That means right now, this place, they know what they're doing. They know the papers. Just tell me where, and then I'll go. And then he told me this place, okay, it's a international managed apartments chain. So basically, they buy entire buildings, and then they manage the apartments on rentals, on long-term rentals, yeah? So those apartments are apartments, not hotels, okay? So they're classified apartments, and they pretty much guarantee the paperwork work can go through. But I'll be paying twice as much as I'm paying. Uh, in the hotel twice and I pay one year in advance yeah so I'm paying through my nose and I don't mind I say to solve this problem I will pay through my nose okay and then immediately I set up a meeting immediately the next day so my first um uh, uh okay and then okay so that was still two days before the end of uh of uh 2021 so immediately I set up a meeting, I have no more time. I said I want this I want this soft within the week before 2021 if I can. Or on the first week of 2021, that's my ultimate deadline. Okay, I, I can't go beyond that, right? And so um I went, it was a beautiful apartment, and I shared it yeah, uh, in my social media and uh, my and one of my live streams. So it was beautiful two stories uh, two stories like like my apartment back in in korea actually and um with a private garden private gym and everything it's like wow but the problem is this it is a beautiful high class apartment in one of the roughest neighborhood of istanbul it's a deep neighborhood away from everything that i love about istanbul miles away from the bosphorus streets Miles away from the Ilamu Royal Pavilion Hotel, uh, Pavilion Gardens. Okay, so you can, and once you get out of the building, you can walk for one hour in any direction, and there will be no garden, no parks, no malls, no just heavy, heavy, deep neighborhood, which is honestly very scary at night. Yeah, very isolated. So if I went with it, okay. Pretty much, I'll be staying indoors all day. I won't be going anywhere anymore. Okay, but I was willing to go go with it only because they are they, they are capable of guaranteeing that this thing can work. And then I posted about this, and that was like what um on the Friday night, on the on New Year's Eve I prep, I uh, no the Thursday the Thursday before New Year's Eve. Okay, so I was post posting about this on my Facebook. I said you know, well. This probably will be my deal if I want to continue staying in Istanbul. Yeah. This is when a good friend, Colleen, who is actually a Turkish citizen from British, right? From Britain, who from UK, <laughs> whom I met doing this live stream. He he saw my 
my post and he, he immediately contacted me and said, Wait, why, why are you going, going with such a deal, going to that kind of a neighborhood? They, they all know about this. They all know this neighborhood sucks, okay? He said, why are you going all the way to that neighborhood? This is crazy. Let me, let me help you. I said, hey, bro, you know, I really appreciate the help. But I need this problem solved like immediately. I, I, I'm out of time. That is the problem. If I have the luxury of time, I would go around my favorite neighborhoods to look for the best price, the best location, the best everything. I'm out of time. And it, I, I said, I have to guarantee that this can work. I really appreciate the help. But not only that, you know, if you, he, he basically he says he, he can find me a better place and a better neighborhood at a better price. Yeah, I say, even if you can do that, can you guarantee that the paperwork will be okay? Right now, I'm very concerned about paperwork. And then, he did, you know, I really appreciate him, you know, like, that he, this was what I say. That was on the first day night. I said, tomorrow morning, Friday morning, give me up to 11 a.m. Friday morning. I will give you a reply. I will go to my friends. I will go to the start agents that I know. I'll find out the details. I'll come back to you by Friday, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate it, you know, like, wow, he's going to that kind of effort just, just to do, just to find this thing out for me, you know, and the next day, not, not, not by 11 a.m., by 10 a.m., say, bro, I have figured it out for you. I know what to do. I, and I have an apartment at Besitash area near my place. Uh, which is which is perfect location, best location for you, at <clears throat> pretty much the same price I'm paying for my hotel right now. Okay, which is half the price of where I was about to go to. Okay, so that was very excited. So I, I said, are you, are you sure? Are you sure they can settle the paperwork? He said, hundred percent, we can do this. Okay, please come. So by by one p.m. we were out and here and we were looking at the place and I wow. Immediately, I love the place. Why? First, I love the location. The location is so good. You guys know that in my top five favorite places here in Istanbul, two are the Bosphorus Straits and the Ilhamu Royal Gardens, right? And I said once, you know, if I live 10 minutes from the Royal Gardens, I will go to the Royal Gardens every single morning, right? Remember? Now, my hotel, I used to have to walk 45 minutes to the Bosphorus and about 30 minutes to Islamu. But here in this location, I am a 15 minutes walk from the Bosphorus Strait. In fact, I can see the Bosphorus Strait up right in front of the street. And only 10 minutes walk to the Islamu Garden. <gasps> Dude, this, is, this was exactly what I have wished for before and it's coming true. So immediately I love the location and then of course I love the house itself. So well decorated, so and very chic. Um very very chic studio with a nice this thing and uh, you know high views in a real Turkish neighborhood. So this so I immediately I fell in love with this thing, this place. So, so it was, but it was already Friday, and there's pretty much nothing we can do, uh, to to do to to hurry the process. So, the next the following week, uh, but be, immediately I I gave the deposit and I confirmed the deal. Okay, so then came to last week. Okay, New Year week. Then I got okay, yeah. So came the New Year week immediately. To, I'm so appreciative together with the landlord himself. He brought all his title documents and everything. And he with my with my fr my friend Colin and his family, uh his wife Sadet, bringing their children, their their young two-year-old girl with me all the way, just going through this process, going to the government department, just getting it all sorted out. And within three days, we got all the paperwork sorted out. So bring it brought me all the way to Thursday of last week. Eh? So we have been running departments, getting all the paperwork. We've run quite a few places to get paperwork. You may think this is oh, this is because of Turkey. I'm sorry. This is the same thing you will experience in every country. Even in Singapore, even in Korea, same thing. They make you run from this department, that department, and all the departments are all over the place. Okay, They are not in one building. Even in Singapore, it's the same thing. You have to go to... Mem 
Ministry of Manpower to do this thing. After that, take this thing, go to the CID in the other part of Singapore, get this report, and then go back to immigration on the other part of Singapore. It's the same thing. It's the same thing in Korea as well. So do not think that this is the Turkey thing. If you want to live overseas in any country, when it comes to immigration procedure, it's the same thing. Okay. But the bigger the country, the further away they tend to be from each other. Right. So we're running. Boom, boom, boom. And really, I was so shocked that so quickly we get it all done. And I show it to my agent. And he said, yep, this paper, exactly, this will do. Wow. And last Friday, I immediately went to the immigration department again for the renewal. It was congested. So many people. It was so congested. That even, even if you're wearing masks, it doesn't matter. Okay. Honestly, I think everybody in that room, in every that few hundred, at least a few hundred people crowded together. They're all gonna get COVID, you know. And I went and boom, I and I got it. And I got the new apartment and I ex managed to extend my, my visa for another year. And I thought my problem was solved. Okay. And the thing is, the problem is this at that time, right? Um actually it takes about one more uh, at least they say one week for the heating gas to come into the house. Now this is this is winter. Without heating gas, it's really cold, right? So, I didn't mind. I said, I want to move in straight away. Because why? Because I would just want to move in, get settled down, and then just and then just get my life going again, you know? And then so I moved in despite not having hot water and heating gas. And so the combined effect of suddenly, you know, that two weeks of build-up fatigue, of stress and build-up fatigue and cold got to me and I started having flu like symptoms uh, since last weekend I, I started having I was like oh so, so, so I made I made a live stream saying like uh, yeah maybe this is just fatigue uh, fatigue getting to me I'm feeling very tired I'm feeling like flu like symptoms coming on so it shouldn't be a big deal but every single day passes started getting worse and worse the next day you can feel a sore throat going across the throat like this uh, so it was really painful and I was like, oh shit. It didn't feel like the regular flu. See, the thing about COVID is you never, you never need to get tested. When you get COVID, you know. Why? Because COVID just feels different. The regular flu, I usually have like, like sore throat deep in the throat here with phlegm. But this is the first time I experienced on the top of my throat, from left to right, slowly from left to right, like a group of parasites moving across and everywhere they moved to it became really painful yeah it felt exactly like that and immediately i know damn this is covid you know <clears throat> of course i'm i'm I, I took two two vaccine jabs so not i'm i wasn't that worried but man now i have to self-isolate i couldn't get medicine i couldn't get food and there's no heating gas so i'm cold Hungry, without medicine, and down to my last bottle of five liter water. Oh, so, and it was so bad that because it, when the illness starts coming out, it wasn't really super cold in the ho in a home like this. But because of the illness, and without heating, I felt super cold, and I had to wear my my winter padding into bed with my comforter every single night. So, the next day it, it went even worse. The next day, I felt inflammation all the way down the chest and my heart started, I started getting chest pain, stomach pain, bad stomach pain. That's when I knew it, it was probably Omicron. I didn't even have to get tested for all these things. You, you know. And honestly, how to, how to get out of house to get tested? See, a lot of things like when you are living in your own country with people take care of you, okay, these things to you may be like, you take for granted, you no? Know, oh, you, there will always someone who, who get a test kit for you, get medicine for you. No, when you're living alone overseas like me, no, nobody's nobody's there to do all these things for you. You gotta have to try to survive all these things. And I, and my 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 landlord just lived lived in the next door, but I didn't want my landlord to panic, saying that I have knowing that I have COVID, you no. Know? So I never told nobody. I don't want to tell them. I don't want to let them know because I, I don't want them panicking because they they have been in close contact with me, right? So, um, so I kept it to myself, 
and for three days I was having pain and everything so it was getting worse and worse and worse on the third day which was uh, uh, Wednesday night it was it, it got so bad I could not even drink water anymore because it's so painful and I was having fever and everything I thought oh this is the worst ordeal I've ever had to go through man and I was cold and hungry and everything you know but I, I wasn't really that hungry because when you're that sick you're not hungry but suddenly on late Wednesday night when it was the worst suddenly it turned the corner suddenly I felt a, a huge pang of hunger come on then, oh, suddenly I feel super hungry immediately I brought out my phone and I, I started to research how to how, how to make home delivery here in, in Istanbul how to get food you know and Thank God I managed to sort it out. Of course, over the past for a few days before that, I wasn't really hungry, so I wasn't even thinking about it. So, I managed to get food delivery. I bought a lot of food and I just munched them all out. <coughs> and um, after I ate everything, I, everything starts to get better and better all of a sudden. It's like, now I realize this is how they say, you know, COVID, right? It hits you the hardest and then it goes away. When it hits you the hardest, it just goes away. And then it just goes away, you know. All the pain subsided. No more pain. And I still have phlegm and inflammation and pain in the sore and, and bad sore throat. But I don't feel sick anymore. And the fever went away. And then the next day, Thursday, which was yesterday, heating gas came on. Wow, so now I have a very warm house. And since then, everything has been recovering so well. Right now, I'll, and I can feel the sore throat going away from right to left. Um, yesterday was only like this much left today too, just a teeny weeny bit left and no more pain no more fever nothing so i say i'm now like 90 percent healed uh recovered and uh honestly i don't i wouldn't even bother get tested yeah you you get it you know yeah and so what if you so what if it's is confirmed or not doesn't make any difference in my life yeah so um but i'm also very grateful that uh, after seeing all my videos, my landlord, my landlord's wife saw my videos and knew what's going on. Immediately last night, she cooked home cooked uh, soup and brought me all kinds of medicines. Last night, I was so touched with the warmth and love of the people here. You know, I thought they might be freaking out, and but no, they came with food. They came with medicine without me asking. So again, very very touched, and yeah. This has been my very <coughs> um, memorable ordeal, uh, New Year ordeal of 2022. Definitely a story I'll be telling for a long time to come. <laughs> and yeah, how was your New Year? I hope you guys had a much smoother and much easier New Year than I did. <laughs> if you're curious about looking around my home, do join me for my live stream. And uh, see you guys soon. Annyeong.